Well, I'm going to start off by introducing our first speaker, uh, North Carolina J.C. Burns Center, Bruce Cairns, director of the J.C. Burns Center. Dr. Cairns, as you probably all know, is the John Stackhouse Distinguished Professor of Surgery. He's the director of the North Carolina J.C. Burns Center, and he also has a joint appointment in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology. And if you ever just want proof that we are highly interdisciplinary, you're looking at a person who is the perfect example of that. He completed his surgical training at UNC, where he was the first National Institutes of Health Trauma Research Fellow. And he's been on the faculty since 2000. He received the Edward Kidder Graham Faculty Service Award for service to the state, nation, and university. And he was recently elected our new faculty chair and will assume those duties in July. Today, he's going to talk to us about the Burns Center, which he joined in 2000 and serves as the medical director. This is one of our proudest examples of innovation and compassionate patient care within the UNC's wonderful healthcare system. Well, good morning. Thank you very much, Chancellor. And uh, it's a real honor to be a member of the faculty here at, at UNC. And I would just like to echo the comments that we've already heard this morning from Andrew and Chair Cottle, and especially Chancellor Folt. I can assure you that the faculty are uh, engaged, as we heard. They're excited, they're enthusiastic, uh, ever fresh and forward, as you have mentioned. Uh, I would also agree very much with uh, Chair Cottle's comments that uh, the Chancellor has really led us uh, through a stellar year, and uh, we're really looking forward to the future. And there's a lot of exciting issues uh, that we're going to address as a faculty with you as a board, and we look forward to working with you. I suspect my presentation is going to be a little bit different than what you've experienced before. Um, of course, you know, being in the medical school, we want to uh, do death by PowerPoint, and I couldn't resist the temptation, but we're going to start with a, a video, and before we before we start it, I'll also tell you that I'm going to walk around your table and, and give you a challenge coin. The Chancellor mentioned the PA program, and this represents our partnership with the military, which I will talk to you about. And then, finally, after I'm done, I'm going to introduce one of our Carolina First students, Maria Santa, uh, Cruz Maria Santa Benez, who just graduated, but she also is someone who is treated in the Burn Center, and she will talk to you about our program. So with that, could you please start the video? Oh, and the reason we're doing the video is because there's really no way to explain the Burn Center better than through the eyes of a patient and her father. Some of the images you are about to see are graphic. It was an average day around my house. My two older sisters had just came home from ball practice. Mom and Dad were planning to fix some dinner. I was eight months old and playing in my favorite walker. I was in the kitchen, in my walker, but I was not supposed to be there. My mom and dad were busy with the dinner, and I put a deep fry full of hot grease on my head. My dad went to call 911 while my mom scooped me up. I put my head on my mom as she went to put me in the sink. She thought I died, but I passed out because of the heat. The emergency response came quickly. After they saw me, they knew I was needing to be airlifted to Chapel Hill. There wasn't room for my mom and dad in the helicopter, so they had to drive. A bunch of neighbors helped get them there, and they were all praying for me. I think they were in shock too. Almost 70% of my body was burned. That's a lot for a baby. I remember when uh, Taylor came to the burn center. It's been nearly a, a decade now. You know, that's a lot of time has passed, but it seems like yesterday. And this, you know, little uh, beautiful child there with a, a breathing tube and with this really large burn and um, so vulnerable. And, you know, when, when you see a child in that situation, you think to yourself, uh, you know, that's why we're here. I mean, to be honest with you, 
the first things that, that crossed my mind was this was a life-threatening injury. This was a very small child with a very large burn. And that um, uh, we needed to get this right. There was really no room for any other plan. And uh, I remember meeting uh, uh, Taylor's mom and dad and uh, having that very first conversation with them about what we needed to do. And uh, one could sense that, that they understood that their lives and uh, Taylor's life had, had changed forever, um, but that we were going to embark on this journey together. The doctors gave me a 7% chance to live. I swelled up so much, my mom didn't even recognize me, and I had a tube in my throat to breathe, so I was on life support. I got to go home early because my mom had helped change bandages and take care of me at the hospital where I was wrapped up like a cocoon. But the chrysalis stage for a burn patient is much longer than a butterfly. I was at Chapel Hill for over eight weeks. I had 12 surgeries, and I will probably have a few more as I grow. I've been scared with some of the big surgeries. The little surgeries aren't too scary. I have always had my family with me, which helped me not to be so scared. I want to make a difference by helping other people get through their burns and make them feel as comfortable as possible and not be scared. Even though it's been nine years, I still miss a lot of school due to the surgeries and doctor's appointments at Chapel Hill and other places. Sometimes at my appointments, I only see the doctors for a few minutes but it takes an entire day to drive up there and back. A burn clinic in Wilmington would help the other kids like me and grown-ups who need to go to our doctors frequently. We wouldn't miss as much school and grown-ups wouldn't miss as much work. We'll always have to provide certain services up here, but the idea is that we, that we use this initiative as uh, a blueprint, a template, for doing this across the state. And then once we're able to solve that problem, then it really becomes a model for the country. So this is a transformative idea, and it really harkens back to how the Burns Center was created, which is a partnership with its community, with the people who support it, the people who built it. And that's how uh, this, the Taylor Campbell uh, Burn Clinic is going to be built, is by the members of the community in southeastern North Carolina, and then we'll be partners in that, in that effort. We have a real need for a clinic. There are lots of people getting burned in this region, and doctors could come and see a bunch of them at one time. Seventy-three counties in North Carolina refer patients to the burn center at Chapel Hill. New Hanover County is one of the top ten counties that refers patients there. It's just been a sheer joy to see Taylor every time, of course. Um, and she really uh, represents uh, a lot of milestones and, and benchmarks for us as a burn center. As we've grown and expanded and increased our volume, it's always been entirely clear to us that when we think about what we're here to do and where we need to go, we think of uh, uh, patients or people, children like Taylor Campbell and, and her family as well. And so our relationship with the Campbells has, gone, has gotten stronger over the years. And um, as we've seen Taylor adjust to her injuries and really uh, grow, she's really, she's really demonstrated the capabilities of the human spirit, um, no matter the challenges they face. And uh, in particular, you know, when you're a child growing up after having a severe burn. So I think that as we've grown uh, and as Taylor's grown, we, we have sort of bonded and, and our missions are very similar. So she really is a very important part of what we do here. I'd like you to help. It's so important because if this happened to you, you would want other people to help. 
I would tell someone in my position that it's going to be okay. There is hope and you are going to get through this because I got through it and I was only eight months old. Well, thank you very much for allowing me to show you that video. I, uh, I had nothing to do with it other than what you uh, saw me say. Her father actually is the one who filmed this and so he's the one who edited it and, and, and created that vision and so that's what you're you're seeing. Um, and so what I'd like to do in, is take a few minutes and just give you a, a, a brief overview of the Burn Center. When you look at Taylor and you see what she says and where she's been, we need to continue to improve and develop this field, revolutionize the way we uh, do medical therapy for people with scars after injury. So you all know, this is my obligate 28 PowerPoint slides, which I'll go through quickly. I'll war I'm warning you ahead of time that um, we are an outstanding elite public research university. And um, we've been recognized for that. We have the most Rhodes Scholars for a public university, and one of those, Lisette York, spent her entire four years with us. We've worked with Nobel laureate Oliver Smithies. We've written some papers with him. And I really have appreciated and agree with Chancellor Fultz's comment that our goal is to reinvent the global public research university. And what's interesting is when uh, Chair Cottle mentioned Atul Gawande when he was here, uh, Dean Roper, who's here, had him uh, come to the medical school and talk a little bit about what it meant, what was the evolution of healthcare going to look like in academic medical centers. And what he said to us was, he said, the thing that makes you different, that distinguishes you from us, is you are a university of the people, and that is your mission. And he said, frankly, that is not our mission. And that's where we can take full advantage of what we do here at Carolina, as we've already heard. As we think about that, though, ultimately it's, as you heard from Taylor, it's service to the state of North Carolina, as a quamperdary to be rather than the seam, envisioned by Edward Kidder Graham, that we need to be in warm, sensitive touch with every problem in North Carolina life. And of course, Memorial Hospital is operated for and by the people of North Carolina. A Little bit about the Burn Center, it was opened in 1981. It was built by the people of the state in coordination with the university. It's the largest ICU in the hospital. It's the only place where both children and adults that are critically ill can be housed in the same location. We're the second busiest burn center in the nation, over 1,400 admissions. It's really a hospital within a hospital, and we're involved in all aspects of care, prevention, best way to treat the burn, uh, clinical care, education research, and then ultimately rehabilitation. This is one of the more unique aspects of the burn center, it's partnership with the public. It was really the JCs and electrical contractor Johnny Stackhouse that built the Burn Center, and then they have an advisory board, and we have this partnership with a number of entities, including the power uh, companies and the firefighters, to raise money. We have a multi-million dollar endowment, and you're going to hear me talk about that again uh, in a bit. But they help guide our programs and to make sure we're look, doing the right things. So why is why is it such a unique opportunity for us to focus on burns in North Carolina? Because we're in the burn belt. This is where most people get burned. I can give you some speculation about that. We don't really know exactly why, but we have issues with healthcare access in general, but particularly for, for burn patients. And so as a result, when you look at our map, you see we cover nearly the entire state. We would like to cover the whole state because only 60% of the people who get admitted with a burn injury come to a burn center like ours, which you're gonna hear about. They really need to come to our place. So as a result, in the last decade, you can see that we've had a two and a half fold increase in the number of admissions from 500 to over 1400 admissions, including children. And we had over 65 patients in our service last month. As I mentioned, this partnership, so the North Carolina Electrical Co-ops donated a substantial amount of money to help us renovate our acute burn wound unit. And you can see Taylor Campbell's uh, picture there because we needed more room for our pa patients. In addition, Duke Energy helped us renovate our family room, no longer called a waiting room. And you're gonna hear a little bit more about Duke Energy next month, and uh, we've been working with David Ruth in the development office on this as well. Who does the work? Well, we're very proud of our faculty. These are the workhorses. Uh, you'll notice also that we uh, very much embrace uh, diversity. We have the very best burn, uh, uh, fellowship trained burn surgeon joining us in July 2014, Felicia Williams, coming from UTMB. And we really appreciate the chancellor and the provost in supporting uh, this hire and having this be a focus. I think that we have the best burn faculty in the country. As I mentioned before, we wanna revolutionize the way we manage these patients. We have the only burn reconstruction aesthetic center in the world. 
And as a result, we're now using lasers to modify burn scars, where our goal is, as we heard Taylor say, we'd like to have these people get cured, at least physically. We still have the psychosocial issues, but this has been transformative. This is true translational science and innovation. And so we just presented this at our most, uh, the most prestigious surgical org uh, organization in the country. There was a, an article in the New England Journal of Medicine you may have seen about a veteran who had these kinds of procedures done, but we have by far, by far, the largest experience in the world in using these treatments. We've also, other innovations, we've developed new measures because we really wanna focus on the scarring. What, 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 what do the patients care about? So we use the, the water circle hose, you know, the, the garden hose with the, the, the little perforations to develop this mesh so that when people get a skin graft, it doesn't look like they've been operated on. In addition, we try to solve the most pressing problems of the day. Did you know that we live in the most dangerous state, according to the federal government? I always say that it must be true, but you can see that we have over, you know, we have the largest number of incidents, and as a result, we have to work with a variety of federal agencies, including the NIH, the CDC, and the FDA, to sort of prepare for these events. And we've been doing that. In fact, we were the only place that got the, uh, any kind of patient in North Carolina after the Haiti earthquake in 2010. As the Chancellor mentioned, we are very engaged in education and research, particularly for students, graduate students, undergraduate students. Our training grant just received the highest commendation for um, uh, uh, underrepresented minorities and improving the scientific workforce. We're working on pipeline issues. And we're very excited about that. Also, we've been working with the Special Forces. They've been in the hospital since 2009. Um, we are helping them with their career development, as the Chancellor mentioned, as well as with their educational programs as they evolve in their training as well. And so any of you who may be interested in going down there, I've spoken to Trustee Duckett about this, um, how we can show these partnerships. We've also worked with the School of Nursing and the other aspects of the medical school. We really are transforming uh, our relationship with the military and working with general administration. We are a global public research university. 95% of these injuries occur in the developing world, particularly in Africa. Another partnership with Johnson & Johnson, um, and uh, we'd worked with uh, uh, Trustee Jean Flood in the past uh, on this particular project with Mike Cohen, but we have a wonderful partnership with Johnson & Johnson. We now have a 35-bed burn unit in Malawi. We work with their burn unit that's in uh, Soweto in South Africa. We have the largest academic presence in Africa in treating burn injuries, and so we're gonna transform the way this injury is taken care of. We have improved survival from a burn in Africa from a 20% burn to a 40% burn results in, half, in, in improved survival. It's, it's really a remarkable outcome, and we've transformed the way people interact as well. We have the oldest pediatric burn survivor camp in the country. It's not just about taking care of people, it's about they are members of our family for the rest of their lives. We just had this at Camp Kanata. We have a 35 fire truck parade that goes from the Triangle Town Center to, to Camp Kanata. Again, Touchstone Energy and our uh, colleagues in PSNC, we're creating a new playroom with innovative, uh, innovative uh, interactive technologies for our children and adults. And we have people all over the state engaged in these projects so that everybody feels a part of everything that we do uh, in the Burn Center. So with that, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of, of what we've done in the Burn Center. And uh, all of this is in the materials you have. And I'd like to end with letting uh, Cruz Maria Santa Benez uh, come up and just share with you what it's like for her to be a member uh, of the Carolina family. Good morning, I'm Cruz Santabanez and a, first, a Carolina First graduate. Um, in a nutshell, putting everything together, I would like to share how my life at Carolina started. And with that said, I was at the Burn Center for roughly two, two months. Um, I spent another two, two months at the pediatric ICU and another at the surgical ICU. When I woke up from my coma, I started to get back on with life, started to walk, started to eat. And shortly after, I started to grow an interest in going back to school. So I spoke with my nurses, my doctors, uh, when, when I was still at school, that I wanted to go to school, and they helped me start my last year of high school while I was still um, admitted. And I just, I cannot appreciate enough the help that the Burn Center has given me. Um, and it's something that if it wouldn't have been for them, I would not be here at Carolina. Um, it was through their help that I honestly got here. And to Dr. Cairns, I, I owe him so much. To Dr. Holtman as well, I always said that I owe him my sanity. 
And um, I've had more than 30 surgeries along the way, all while maybe 20 of those, I had them while I was still at school. So it's been, it's been a process. It's been difficult, but not impossible. And I've been able to endure this with the help of my family, help of countless people that loved me, and also the J.C. Byrne Center. So with that said, um, as far as the surgeries, I've had countless lasers. I've had other reconstructive surgeries as well. And I honestly don't know what I would do without them. Um, obviously continue, but it changes a lot of things. Um, to Dr. Karen, thank you. Thank you so much. And to the whole J.C. Byrne Center, I wouldn't be here without you. And obviously, I can't go without thanking God as well. But to everyone that has helped me, has supported me along the way, thank you so much. And to the J.C. Byrne Center, to everyone that has cooperated in some way to make it possible, thank you as well. Thank you. So you can imagine we are extremely proud and, and, uh, of uh, Cruz Maria Santa Benez and uh, Trustee Curtis, she's going into the media uh, journalism and so uh, we look forward to seeing her uh, uh, changing that world as well. I think that the way I'd like to end this presentation uh, and, and uh, hopefully I'm on time, and Paul Krauss is here to make sure he has the hook if I, if I talk too long. So uh, what I would say is um, another aspect that makes Carolina such a great place and why I am so pleased and honored to be the uh, faculty, uh, the, the chair elect of the faculty is because of our interdisciplinary collaborative nature, um, as the chancellor mentioned. And it's true with the college as well as all the professional schools. This is something that Dean Roper talks about all the time. And whether it's in the laboratory or if it's in social work, we're going to hear about them as well. And the School of Government is a fantastic program, so I don't want to uh, impede on their time or if it's with dramatic art. And I uh, spent time with Emil Kane and talking about how the arts impact the way we deliver medicine and medicine in the humanities. Um, or if it's the Odom Institute and really getting a handle on the data as we've mentioned in, in Africa. And so it's been a pleasure for me to get to know about all of the schools and all of the different disciplines and centers and institutes and the faculty and what they have to contribute. Because in collaborating with them, we're able to take what you've just seen and heard and make it not just the best there is, but that they're best there ever will be, just as Carolina will be as well. So thank you again for the opportunity to speak this morning. I don't know if you have any questions for me. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about how um, people from across the state are able to come here and, and what does happen to burn, burn, uh, people who are burned that don't come to the burn center because you did have some gaps on that that map and and that seems like that's that's a concern that I'm sure you're trying to address so we are open access uh, the most important um, uh, message we send to the people of the state is that if you need us call us we'll take you there's no way to, that we would ever turn someone down and so we have to work with the various hospitals across the state and we have our health care system which I'm sure you've heard about that we've now expanded. And so we're creating some uh, interconnectivity of that. We, we're developing a proposal for uh, telemedicine. Hopefully I'll get a chance to share that with you as well. The, the challenge that we face is we, we need people to know that the Burn Center has all of these wonderful programs that you've heard about and that they, people really need to come here to, to get that. Uh, and that it's in their best interest. It's not their best interest to get the patients out of the emergency room and send them somewhere else. And what I worry about is patients that leave the state because the way payment works generally for a lot of these folks is, is through Medicaid. And if they leave the state, then not only do they not get those services there, but then they don't have the opportunity to be in our system. And so we're really trying to reach out through all 100 counties. We work very closely actually with the community colleges. We bring in community college uh, nurses and paramedics and firefighters to try to get the word out. I think it's a, it, the, the idea is a communication and education. As I would mentioned, we have these aftercare programs. We do this for both children and adults. And so what we're going to develop is a regional one for the southeast so that uh, anybody who's in North Carolina or in the southeast that might need access to this burn reconstruction sex center will at least get exposed to what we're doing. So I think it's just a matter of uh, getting in the car and hitting the pavement and, and, and connecting with the people and, and trying to get the message out. 
it's why the idea I think you'd mentioned of the 100 counties in 100 days idea, that will help us because then people can, we can piggyback on that and get the word out that we're here for them. But we do, I worry very much about those patients that, that don't get to see us because if you're a burn patient and a burn survivor and you don't have a support system, you become very isolated from society and you don't get a job and you don't go back to school. And I, I really wanna reach all of those people. We're, it's a challenging problem. Thank you very much.